Okay, so what I have here is my sheet of paper. I've already lightly sketched um, my totem pole animal, my design, my spirit animal. And um, so I did a cat, and I'm just going to go over it a little harder with pencil so you can see it. So what I did was basically I just drew light to make sure I got it right. And now I'm pressing harder with my pencil so I can see the lines and you can see them on the screen. So when you are drawing your animal, especially if you are designing one from your own brain, you want to think of it, design it in the style of Native Americans. So a lot of their shapes are large, very kind of simple shapes, not too many um, like itsy bitsy designs not a ton of curved lines, a lot of straightness to it. So you can see my whiskers here. I made these like big chunky shapes rather than just little lines. The eyes, I made a big chunky outline. my animal and then in the background you want to create some type of pattern a design of any type maybe one that you see from the Native American images we've looked at or one that you come up with from your own brain I've seen this pattern on the wings on some totem poles so that's why I'm choosing to draw this pattern so this is something I have seen before So I want you to notice on this long sheet of paper how big my animal is and then how much leftover space is for the pattern. You don't want to draw your animal real tiny here. You don't want to draw it over on the side. You want to try to get it right in the middle and make it go from the top to the bottom. You want it to be a large face portrait. And then from there you want to take oil pastels and you're going to outline your image and you can choose the color. I don't want you to color it in. I just want us to do simple outlines. So I'm just going to go over my pencil marks with oil pastel. Okay, so now that I've outlined everything with the oil pastel, I've included a little more pattern. We're going to paint this in using um, a paint called liquid watercolor. So watercolor paints usually come to us in a type of tray that we open and they're like little pieces of paint and we have to get our paintbrush wet and paint it in. Liquid watercolor comes to us like this. It's a liquid. So the difference is um, it's a little messier. If you drop this on the floor, it will go everywhere. Um, it's like water. It's like colored water, essentially what it is. Um, but you don't have to get your paintbrush wet before you begin, so you can just dip your paintbrush into the paint and start. Um, so I make this by using old markers, and I put them in water, and it creates paint. So it's a good way to reuse markers and turn them into something new. If you guys notice what I'm doing here, you're going to have to share these paints because I don't have a ton of them. But what I'm doing is I'm taking the lids off of them and I'm putting the lid underneath it and laying the paint bucket on top so they can stay together. Um, try to keep it as clean as you can and you want to share the paints with everybody. So what I'm going to start with is yellow because my cat I outlined with yellow so I will just dip my brush into the yellow and begin painting it in and you want to use the tippy toe of your brush <clears throat> for the smaller areas and then use the side of your brush for the bigger areas and always drag your brush you never want to push it 
You give it a bad hair day. You don't want sloppy brushes because then they don't work as well. So your job now is just to paint all of this in and you want to kind of stay true to the colors you chose as your outline colors. So for my whiskers I'll color those in black because I outlined them in black. Um, for the little parts of the ears I'll color those in violet because I outlined them in violet. That way we don't have too many colors going on in this image. Now you always want to rinse your brush when you switch colors. So I'm done with my yellow, now I'm switching. So I'll rinse my brush, dip it into a new color, and begin. Be careful, especially in these smaller areas, because all this paint is very wet, so they're going to want to start to kind of bleed and blend into one another. So maybe you might want to do a big shape and then move on to a different shape, because I can see right here, mines are kind of going outside of the shapes I want them to be in just because it's a little too wet. So I'm just going to leave the face alone and I'm going to move on to the background and work on that right now. So here is my Native American design. It is um, complete. It is very, very wet. So when you go to put it onto the drying rack, make sure you are really holding it with both of your hands like this. Don't tilt it because the paint will start to drip. Um, so two hands straight to the drying rack, let it dry.